Hi, this is Real World Audio, and we are uh, concluding the comparison of these four uh, Audio Nirvana classic uh, full range drivers. And today I will uh, have the 12 inch version under the magnifying glass to see how its frequency response uh, curve looks like and how it compares to the other three brothers. And I will give you pointers. Uh, when you want to use that and indications when you will have uh, less of a success with it than you expected so let's see uh, right here okay so here we are the description for the uh, 12 inch uh, driver so now uh, what we need to be aware of is that for all of these ferrite models so the 8 inch 10 inch and 12 inch they use the same magnet structure to drive the cones. So basically it means that as we go upper and upper in size, then the magnet will have a, a, a relatively lower and lower control over the uh, cone because it will need to move a cone which is much, much uh, heavier. So, so the moving mass here we have uh, 33 grams for the 12 inch driver and now let's go back to the 8 inch driver so here we have 13.6 grams so, so what's the difference between that so, so that's less than half like, like 2 fifth of the weight for the 8 inch driver compared to the 12 inch driver so basically uh, this will translate uh, due to the laws of physics if you need to accelerate less than half the weight then it means that your uh, movements will be much faster and much more precise so that's why that's one reason why the eight inch driver will sound the fastest of them all and will have the greatest control over every frequency reproduced including the low and response however because of the larger cone as we go up in the diameter of the driver uh, the preference of the driver will uh, to work it will be to work at lower and lower frequencies so basically they will feel more at home at, at a lower frequency compared to the 8 inch driver. And now let's see just what is the actual frequency where the 12 inch driver really feels at home. So when we look at the frequency response curve, the striking thing that we noticed, the difference between the 8 inch and the 12 inch, is that for here, this is the 12 inch driver, basically looking at uh, here at, at 300 hertz like 330 hertz that's where the uh, response is the weakest so output of the cone is the weakest and then as we go down to about 100 hertz the output increases and basically we will see a peak at 100 hertz and and we can see this whole range that's uh, overrepresented compared to the deep base and and this region is basically the uh, upper end of the mid base and the upper base so basically the upper mid base and upper base will be reproduced uh, more strong with the 12 inch driver than uh, looking at where do i have here is the 8 inch driver let's look at the figure so you see uh, this region between uh, 100 hertz and, and 300 hertz it's, it's just a flat line and when we go to the where do we have the 12 inch driver the response is just climbing up as we go down in frequency and it climbs up a lot look at that at 330 hertz we are down to uh, 92 dB according to this figure and at 100 Hertz we are going up to 100 dB I think uh, I'm a little skeptical that, that uh, it, we are getting 100 dB at 100 Hertz 
I and I'm also a little skeptical that we can get 108 dB at the same time because uh, we cannot get more energy than what we get with the atom driver as uh, as as we use much heavier cone weight so so I'm I'm not sure about the authenticity that that these uh, figures represent the actual dB uh, it's it's contradicted by by the SPL figure uh, shown here, so so I cannot directly comment on what these numbers are, but uh, do not get hung up on on on, on that, because uh, I would say that uh, ninety five percent of the dB or SPL scales that you are getting are uh, highly questionable at best. And uh, they are a good representation. And when you look at the fact, look at the magnet weight, look at the uh, motor strength. So here they do not list the Tesla value, which is the field strength at, at the coil, at the voice coil gap. That would really tell us uh, what we can expect from the uh, sensitivity of the loudspeaker we just get the BL the mo the average motor strength but but this does not tell us uh, how capable that motor is to focus as much energy as possible into the voice coil gap so you can have high BL values but uh, a weaker strength in the voice coil or you can have a lower BL value but still a very high uh, field strength in, 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 the, in the voice coil gap. So anyway, what we can uh, 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 predict from these curves is the balance between the high frequency energy, mid-range and the base, and we can compare that between these two drivers because they were done by the same company and they use the same system to measure, so it can give, oops, this is the 10-inch uh, Alnico, uh, so let's just go back here we were so that's the 12 inch woofer so here you can see that there's a tremendous rise to 100 Hertz so it means that the mid base will be very prominent with this driver however we see that there is a sharp decline below 100 Hertz so basically uh, the uh, the, the the lower end of the mid base and the deep base will be much much uh, poorer compared to the 8 inch version where where the drop is not as drastic as as the one that we observe with the 12 inch driver and and when we look at the uh, 10 inch this is not the alnico so when you look at the 10 inch alnico uh, that has a better base response than the 12-inch ferrite version, even though it's a slightly smaller driver, because you see it starts dropping at 50 Hz. Now let's have a look at the 12-inch cone. It starts dropping at 100 Hz. And then let's start... Uh, and, and, and the drop is very, very steep. And when we look at the 8-inch driver, it starts dropping at 150 Hertz, but the slope is very gentle and it really starts uh, becoming worrisome below 50 Hertz or so. Uh, for the 12 inch driver, it starts to become very rough and pronounced right below 100 dB. So basically, if uh, your hearing preference is for the mid bass, then you will be happiest with the 12 inch driver if you want to enjoy deep bass then the uh, 10 inch alnico will be for the best service and for basically the best budget version and and and, and, the, and an affordable uh, good bass you want to use the 8 inch uh, driver so I think uh, this is, uh, that concludes my introduction for the audio Nirvana drivers. I hope uh, this little mini-series was helpful for everyone and gave you pointers which driver to pick of these four if you want to 
build your own project. There is one more thing for me to left and, and this is absolutely huge. You have to look at the uh, proposed cabinet uh, size for them. And you see for the 12 inch version, it's absolutely huge. So now we are thinking of a 300 liter cabinet volume. So that value tells you that if you use a, build a loudspeaker with it, then you will be able to uh, enjoy the full base output with a 300 liter monstrous huge refrigerator size cabinet. I would not recommend putting this driver in anything less than 200 liters uh, because then you will not get anywhere close to the potential of what this driver will give you in the base output. And let's have a look at the Alnico. Uh, what's the recommended volume? It's 125 liters. It's almost the third of uh, of the 12 inch version. So this will be happy in a in a in a normal size cabinet that's not too big, and and fits in most of our living rooms and bedrooms and and it's absolutely doable I would say. So it would be like like a relatively bigger but not a monster size uh, cabinet. And when we look at the ferrite version of the 10-inch uh, uh, driver, then 180 liters. It requires a bigger cabinet than the Alnico. Now we are getting into trouble. Now 180 liters volume cabinet is, is, is pretty darn big and way bigger than a 125 liter cabinet. Uh, and now when we look at the 8-inch uh, driver, it will be happy in a 55 liter cabinet. That's a, a relatively smallish cabinet as far as high efficiency drivers go. We are talking about two cubic feet uh, cabinet, but be mindful please that these are free air volumes. So this has to be the free air inside your cabinet. So it means that any bracing you use, any uh, thickness of the cabinet material if you add port the volume uh, that is uh, included by your port that is in addition to these volumes so basically if you want a 300 liter cabinet for your 12 inch driver then the uh, total volume that it uses from your uh, living room will be at least 370 liters and if you are talking about this 55 liter cabinet then it will be at least uh, 65 70 liters with the cabinet material included so i hope this was really helpful for everyone for pointers of course you can put them in a smaller cabinet and then what you will get is a drastically diminished response in the low frequency and uh, that's why people need subwoofers when they play around with full range loudspeakers because they are choking their drivers with small cabinets and that's when you have to uh, play around with subwoofers and uh, if you get lucky maybe you find one that uh, matches it but most of us we will not find a subwoofer that can keep up with a high efficiency driver that is uh, good enough for our uh, taste so thank you please like subscribe have a wonderful day bye bye